Are you from IB curriculum? No, I'm not. Are you from ISC? No, I'm not from ISC. Are you from CBSE then? No, man, I'm not from CBSE. So what's your curriculum? Where have you studied? Man, I studied state board. So now what I want to do is I want to take this. I want to share my journey, and if that inspires people along the way, and if that motivates them, I've accomplished. I've accomplished my goal. I have seen a lot of videos on YouTube where people talk about the grades that got them into colleges and most of them are covered from a perspective of an Ivy League student which is not beneficial for somebody who is an average scorer. So I am filming this video for all of those who is an average scorer so that they can compare their score with mine score and have a self satisfaction that you can also get into this university. So here is a short demographic. I'm assuming that you know Bhopal, which is the capital of Madhya Pradesh. I'm just 40 kilometers away from Bhopal, which is Sihal. Not an appealing place. I applied for computer science major, and everybody knows I am a state board student. So here's a short disclaimer before I begin this video: that most of you think that your school scores and your stats are going to the most important thing in your entire application. But I'm going to break this chain. Look at this table. So your scores matter only 25% and your SAT matters 15%. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not looking at the table right now. And the remaining 55% comes from your extracurriculars, your essays and from your letter of recommendations. So don't worry if you scored less marks in your school, you still have a chance. Make your extracurricular profile better, write a good essay, you're still going to get good scholarship. So you don't need to worry about your scores. That does not mean you do not have to focus on your schools. That means you have to focus on your extracurriculars and essays more than you're focusing on your stats. Let's talk about my stats. There is a time in every person's life when he is distracted by his friends and his batchmates or, uh, or sports. This came into my life in my 9th grade. I was really distracted by everybody around me. I do not used to study. I got 52% in my 9th grade. Don't worry, my story ends good. After scoring 52%, I realized that there is something wrong I'm doing with myself. So I have to start studying. And after studying for a whole lot of years, focusing only in NCRTs, I went from this to this. So I scored 89% in my 10th grade. So this time when COVID hit, I got 89%. Most of the people came to me, told me that because of COVID you got 89, otherwise you're going to get 50 again. So I stood, I took the point, okay, I studied for 11th class and I took mathematics, which consists of maths, English, Hindi, chemistry, physics and computer science. So I used to study a lot in my 11th grade. That's why I'll be able to score 83% in my class. Not a good score, but still manageable to get into good universities with good scores. And this is how I got 88% in my 12th grade as a predicted scores. So that's all my stats. Standardized testing or SATs. One of the most difficult part for me to prepare in my application because there are no free resources on the internet to study for SAT regardless of Khan Academy. But the difficulty level for Khan Academy is much more higher than the actual SAT level. So I tried to buy some books like Erika L. Meltzer to study for grammar and Panda Math to study for my math section but they were costing a lot. They were costing around 5000 rupees, 10,000 rupees so I thought let's do some find some free resources on the internet. So after surfing for 10 to 20 days, I found all of these books for free. I got all of these books for free. I did not pay even a single rupee or a single dollar to get these books. And if you want to know how to get all of these books for free, just let me know. I will make sure to make a video on it so that you can get these books for free as well. So after studying for one year, I gave my first SAT attempt in May 2022, where I scored 1370 in my first attempt. I thought that might not be a good score and I have time 
so I gave ICT again in October 2022. I scored 1390 in my second attempt, which made a super score of 1410. And I'm happy with the scores because they were good enough to level up that I scored 52% in 9th grade to 1400 in SAT. Last but not the least, here comes the English proficiency test. So I took two English proficiency tests, Duolingo and TOEFL. I took TOEFL in my 10th grade because I was not familiar with Duolingo at that time. For those who are taking Duolingo, I would not suggest them to take TOEFL because Duolingo is the best test you can give at this time for English proficiency because you can give Duolingo by sitting at your home, you can get results in two days and you can give, send those results to all the universities for free. Whereas TOEFL is totally opposite for it. So when I took TOEFL in my 10th grade, I got 102 marks in TOEFL. After preparing for a lot of time, I gave Duolingo without paying a single dollar and neither I paid a single dollar in SAT as well. So if you want to know how I get cost discount in my Duolingo and SAT, just let me know. And I got 130 marks in Duolingo as well. So English proficiency matters, but nowadays university are just waving in English proficiency test as well. So you just you can just check it out about it. And that's pretty much it for today. And I will see you guys soon. Goodbye.